Hey everybody, this is John Locke with Locke Division of J.D. Hudgens, Hunger for Texas. And I wanted to make a quick video. I was very honored to be on Clay Connery's Working Cows podcast of the day. And one of the questions I keep getting is about calving on the move and moving a lot while you're calving. So I thought I'd do a quick video. Uh, just a disclaimer and excuse. This is completely unprepared and off the cuff. So uh, bear with me. But there's a lot of considerations if you're going to be calving on the move. I say the first thing is, are you calving in sync with nature? We start calving in the beginning of March in our part of the world, which sometimes is pretty mild, sometimes is pretty wild. Um, you know, that's a debate for another day. Uh, we've, we've, we always struggle with whether we are calving at the right time or not. Um, you know, we're in the seed stock business, we sell registered bulls. There's a lot of challenges about your timing of your calving. I personally feel like we're fairly close. I'm not gonna say that we're spot on and, and we constantly look at that. But I almost believe that no matter when you're calving, if you're calving close to being in sync with nature, the reason why we calve on the move is because we don't feel like we can afford to set stock those cows when we're calving. We've got grass growing really fast right now and uh, it's, it's a nightmare to manage no matter what you do. And if we let the calving dictate what we did about the grass, uh, that could maybe set us up for not as good of a growing season, at least a warm season growing season. So, and with that being said, you can see I'm standing in a lot of tall fescue right now that's gone to seed. This stuff for me is a real struggle to manage in this environment. And uh, that's a topic for another video. But anyway, um, calving in sync with nature, close to being in sync with nature, considering how you're setting yourself up for the growing season if you're not calving on the move. Now I wanna say right up front that I'm not advocating that everybody should do this. We've got a lot of distinct advantages in our operation that allow us to do this. Probably the first one is, is that I'm a full-time rancher. You know, this is, this is all I do and I'm blessed to be able to do that. So if I come out here and I have a difficult move coming up, I don't have to try to move the cows and get to a job or I don't have to try to get from a job and get out here to move the cows. Uh, the other distinct advantage that I have is Brahmin cattle are really, really gregarious. I mean, these guys, they want to stick together. And we do run some crossbred cows and some higher uh, boss tars content cows in the herd. They are more challenging. I'll, I'll give you that. I can see that. Uh, you know, those calves tend to not have the desire to keep up quite as much as the Brahmin calves do. With that being said, we move... Uh, Brahmin pairs when calves are two hours old sometimes. Right now we're moving six or seven times a day. We've been calving for right at a month or just over a month. And uh, I really think one of the biggest concerns if you're going to be calving and moving cattle is, stock, cattle is stockmanship. I hear a lot of people say, well I'm no Bud Williams or I can never be as good as Bud Williams. Um, I'm not either, but I can try and I've, I've studied stockmanship for a long time. Uh, we're fortunate that we have a herd of cattle here that we manage day in and day out. They know us, we know them, we know how to handle them, but I always have to educate a new employee on, on what we do. So about two years ago, maybe three, I came to the realization that we were making a mistake by ever calling our cattle to fresh pasture. And so we don't do that anymore. We just stopped that cold turkey Back in those days, we used to drive them sometimes, we used to call them sometimes. I really think it confuses them. I think it messes up your, your social dynamic of your herd. I think that you need to have strong, moderately strong stockmanship skills, and I think you need to learn how to communicate with that herd and send your cattle where you want them to go. I see people all the time that call their cows, they go to the gate, open the gate, they call their cows. Um, that's, you know, to me, that just didn't work as well for us and we had a lot more issues when we did that. If you think about it, if that cow is deficient in something, if she's hungry, if she just had a calf, if she's confused, she wants to stay with the herd, there's a higher probability that she's going to leave that calf behind. But if you get your cows and your herd in the routine of being handled and being pushed to the next paddock, I think you're a lot better off because they have to think. And I've seen it before where... A cow will leave her calf behind, and I've taken the mob to the to the gate, and I'm not going to open the gate until I make that cow go back and get her calf. Um, we are at a huge advantage as well because we have relatively small paddocks. 
our paddocks are about permanent paddocks are about six acres sometimes we subdivide those but what we will do if we're moving from six acres to another six acre block we'll leave the fence up we'll let the cow travel back to get her calf if necessary or if she's a little bit slow we'll leave her behind with her calf and she can catch up later on um, that is, is is pretty important I think no matter how many times a day you're moving obviously if we're moving with timers with no back fence and we're moving away from our water source then the same thing applies you know if those cows are moving on their own when the gate goes off then uh, there's you know infinite opportunities throughout the day for them to either go back and get their calf or stay with their calf and go catch up I'm not gonna say we don't ever have problems every once in a while you know we have to look for a calf it's, it's not very often. Um, I, I just can't tell you, I don't have as much experience with Boss Tars cattle, so I can't tell you how applicable the behavior of these cattle and their ability to, to bring their calves along with them plays into it. I'd say another concern, and, and probably the final thing I'll talk about, is you know nutritionally, are those cows being pretty well balanced or they having the ability to express their nutritional wisdom and, and look after themselves throughout the day and they're grazing if you're hammering your grass and you're taking it down low and not selectively grazing their desire to move to the next paddock is going to be a lot stronger if you're selectively grazing even if you're moving eight ten times a day there's not nearly the urgency in those cows to have to get to the next paddock so they're going to be less likely to leave that calf behind they're probably going to be on a higher plane of nutrition to begin with. They're not going to be operating with any sort of a, a deficiency going on. Uh, sometimes there could be a weed in the paddock that they're relying on to get some mineral from. And if they're deficient, they'll take off and leave that calf and go straight to the next paddock so they can be the first one to get there to, uh, to look after that deficiency or try to help themselves. So in a nutshell, uh, for me, it all boils down to being able to manage your grass the best way possible to set yourself up for a, a really good growing season. Stockmanship is probably the number one concern. I would highly encourage people to consider handling their cattle, moving their cattle, driving their cattle, and forget about calling them. Uh, I just don't think that that's, that's really healthy long term for your mob structure. And then, of course, the other concerns that, that I talked about, allowing cattle to go back to pick up their calves. Uh, grazing in a way that the cattle are performing well so that they will be balanced and they don't have any deficiencies occurring short term or long term. So I hope that helps. Uh, please feel free to share this video, post any questions, anything. Um, maybe I've confused some of you more than I've helped you, but just that's my perspective on it and that's how we do what we do and why we do what we do. Thanks for watching.